So let's look at the swing here, sent through the mobile app. Um, bit of fidgeting going on. We're going to talk a little bit about your waggle. So this bit's fine here as you move. It's that bit there. I don't like the way you waggle the club there, which we're going to talk about when we get out on the range. Um, if we just move you into your swing here, what we see, load on the back swing could be better, but it's not too bad. We see what people would call no lag, I think people call this kind of thing. Basically the club is moving too much over towards us out of the camera here. We need to get the club drop in, so not back as in back this way, but back as in back towards your golf bag, back behind you. Your path is very much across, down and across this ball, which pushes your weight and makes you spin around this right foot. So we could definitely do a bit of weight shift on the way down, which we'll talk about, but we definitely need to feel like this club is dropping back towards your golf bag, back this way. Uh, on the downswing, so more from behind you to help you hit through the ball a lot better. Let's give you a few drills. So, first thing, we see a waggle which goes this way. I hate waggles that way. It just make no sense to me that way. My waggle so me fidgeting to get ready. My waggle, the way I move the club back and forward is based on where I want the club to go. So I want the club to kind of come through here. So my waggle is kind of, it's back and just, it's kind of approaching from the angle. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to hit it that way. Like a snooker or pull shot. You know, you're kind of going, and then you're hitting it. It's just crazy. You've got to be moving that club back and forth on the path you think it wants to hit a bit more. Um, you know, out here, and that's pretty much where your swing's going. Um, so look, drill. Let's get the waggle moving this way. So hard to change the waggle. It sounds so easy when I talk about it, but when I teach people getting to change the waggle, it's so instinctive for them. It's hard. So that's something you should do at home. Um, you know, kind of just pick a club up and waggle it, think about, right, yeah, I want to hit the ball this way. I don't want to be hitting it. Oh, oh, this way. Um, look, let's get this club feeling like it's dropping, like massively. So first of all, let's go, one hand it swings up to the top of your back, swing left hand, it's still turn your chest, still turn your shoulders. Then drop the club so it feels parallel to the ground and then spin it out in front of you. Again, parallel to the ground, spin it out in front of you. Just do a few of those. Drop it parallel to the ground, spin it out in front of you. Now, if you can do this, drop it, parallel to the ground, move your weight onto the left and spin it out in front of you all simultaneously. Even better, okay? So do again, couple of left-handed swings, drop parallel to the ground, spin it out in front of you. Two-handed version, and then try and bleed that quick as you can into a shot. You're gonna find, if you can get that club dropping and that weight moving, that hitting off that Going that way, so turning around this right leg and moving the club over and down and across will absolutely transform your game and it'll transform the shape shots you hit to the quality of your strike. Got to get that club coming down this way. So you don't need to drop your hands. You don't need to be dropping your hands in here like people say, don't do any of that. You want to pull your hands at where your impact position is, which is to you I feel like at the ball. Um, you just want to get that head below it to then spin it out. One-handed swings, two or three of them. Parallel with the ground, then spin, and then put that into your full shot. You are gonna find very different quality of strikes coming out of those hits. So, not a bad swing here. I love the way someone's shooting you through the window here. Couldn't be bothered to come outside with you. <laughs> I would imagine that's a partner or wife who's just thinking, uh, Oh, you and your golf. Right, look, good looking swing here, lots of good actions, um, lots of good movements. What I would like to see is a little less sway. The camera moves a little bit, so my lines will move a little bit. We see a fraction of a kick out on the back swing here, weight moving a bit on the outside of your foot. Impact, not bad at all. Don't like the collapsing so much here of your left leg. Strike definitely could be compromised. I can imagine you're hitting some very good shots, but a little bit of um, containment more in your pelvis area, in your hips, trying to get you to rotate with a little less lateral swaying, I think might just firm up your strike and help you play a bit better golf. Let's get out on the range and give you some help. It's a good looking, it's a good looking swing, a little bit. 
too swayy to get a consistent strike in my opinion you're probably going to find a few fat and fins those kind of things hitting a bit too much of the club face but there's a lot of good athletic movements in that swing so look let's get that right knee tidied up a little bit we need to just try and turn a little bit more around that right knee i don't mind if the right knee straightens back i just want you to feel that the right knee isn't particularly moving this way on your back swing so you need a lot more stability in your hips you want to be feeling like you're hitting the ball this way and this way at the more a, a lot more at the moment you're much more kind of back here back there so standing over the ball good way of feeling it just let cl the club go i'm just resting it on my waist here hands down in front of me just feel like you're pulling a weight up feel how your right shoulder goes back feel how your right hip feels like it moves back rather than sways and then feel like you're pulling the weight back up with your left hand because that'll help you feel like you're straightening up through your left leg as well so you're pulling like if you're at the gym pulling it up with your right hand pulling it up with your left get rid of this kind of moving it this way kind of action so i would do this i would stand over the ball okay i just feel my right hand pulling that up and then my left hand pull it just get the feel of what that feels like in my body and then try and put that into an actual shot that feeling of moving right shoulder up and back left pocket going also right pocket going back rather than swaying and then left leg straightening up as you come down through the ball great drill great visualization i give to people to try and fix this kind of swaying action fixes them every time let me know how you go so question here from liam hi mark want to add more distance to my game currently hit 7 iron 140 driver 205 carry i have regular lessons and have a pretty good swing which we work on to improve my ball striking and miss hits mainly okay that's interesting miss hits obviously you're going to lose distance do you believe that extra lessons working on ideal swing mechanics or time spent in the gym is a better use of time and money to gain distance uh, do you have a fit did have a fitting a while ago we can't remember the club head speed but i required a regular flex thanks liam um interesting question there's a few things i'd point out there i mean the miss hits definitely you need to work on distance is not an issue you i don't know and this might be totally wrong it sounds like a junior's question so you will hit the ball further as you get bigger and there's the other thing with going to the gym i'm not sure going to the gym is the best thing to do if you're a certain age so maybe too young that would be a personal trainer's question go and ask a gym personal trainer tell them what you want to do it'd be strength training possibly um and they'll say look you're too young or whatever well, they'll give you some ideas of what you can and can't do definitely going to the gym is a good thing um if you're older and you want so my age i'm in my mid 30s <laughs> david brenty isn't it um uh and definitely if i wanted to get stronger now gym is where i would have to go get fitter stronger those kind of things better diet all those kind of things so all that is good you can never do any harm doing all those things within reason um distance comes from club head speed um, but i can get lots of distance for people out of better contacts like you're working on which is great different paths different angle of attacks those kind of ideas different lofts on club there's lots of ways of doing it the other thing as well I would point out to you, I reckon I could play off, I don't know what your handicap is, but I reckon I could play off with those distances you said there. Well, as a junior, I used to hit the ball those distances when I played off scratch. So when I was 16, I was probably hitting a 7 iron 140 um, and a driver carrying 205. Um, I wasn't the biggest junior in the world by a long ways with the old equipment and stuff as well, and Bellata balls and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I played off scratch, so maybe you are hitting it far enough. Maybe that's not the answer. The, I, I understand why you might want to hit it far further. It's fun, but maybe it's not actually the answer. So maybe a few more kind of um, best thing to do, I would say, is do a bit more monitoring on where you're losing your shots and why those kind of things. Putts per round, greens hit, fairways hit, all that kind of stuff. Um, and really kind of drill down and see where the shots are going. Is it purely distance? Everything else is perfect. Distance isn't always the answer to everything like people think it is in this modern age because manufacturers push distance. And, and um, I'm sure the commentators on telly are a bit responsible for that, talking about these ridiculous distances. I saw a, a, a competition the other day, I think it was in Hawaii. Hole measure 202 hit a six iron. He was not, it was not 202 from those tees. That was what the hole measured. The ball, it was way forward. The tee was, it looked like it was 180, 190 at the most. They just 
call a yardage sometimes and then this guy's hitting a seven or an eight iron or whatever he's hitting and we think wow 202 eight iron that's amazing but was it actually 202 or was that just middle of the green from the tees back tees you can see the tees are way forward they move them every day so don't get too preoccupied with distance thanks for the question thanks for getting the app jim good keep going with the lessons both of them are good or whatever you can afford but maybe drill down and see where you are losing your real shots i don't think it'll be distance i can show you some juniors hitting it shorter than that it'll play off scratch as well thanks for watching so posture 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 in this one um, we see a big push cut here on the way through let's talk about there's golf posture that needs to be employed in this shot you're using more life posture so very upright i want to see these shoulders get ahead of the toes we need to get the pelvis leaning forward considerably more to try and help you if we take your swing through with this massive thrusting action that you get so look how far forward your hips want to hit and thrust as you hit this ball finishing with zero side bend, just completely upright and fully extended. We need to get you getting some side bend into this finish. Let's get on the range, talk a bit about posture and how it might help you hit some better shots. So posture, 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 isn't it? You are standing in day posture. Oh, I don't know how you do that, hit the ball. You've got to learn to stand over the ball. You've got to get in golf posture. You've got to get into golf feelings you can't feel the same as you would if you were just walking down a street can't, oh i've got a golf club in my hand now i'm going to hit a ball you've got to adjust to really all in your kind of pelvis area you've got to try and tilt your pelvis forward so don't think about your back try and keep your back relatively engaged so straight it's not too rounded or certainly don't try and extend that way just feel like you're stood up nice and straight like you would if you were in the street but then you've got to tilt your pelvis imagine someone slicing me in half here and you want your pelvis to tip forwards and a lot from where you're feeling you're going to feel like your bum goes back your legs straighten a little bit of knee flex then from there it's going to be a case i want you to feel that you're swinging considerably and this is just a general term but i want you to feel like you're swinging massively around your body so to you you are going to feel like you're stood like this swinging around your body compared to what you do you cannot play good golf from where you're stood and where you're going to with your pelvis you've got to learn to try and tilt forwards and then from there feel like you're just swinging the club around your waist a lot more you're going to hit the ball so much more solid you're going to hit the ball very very differently to how you hit the ball now you're going to hit some funny ones at the start because it's going to feel really odd but just learn to tilt that pelvis down get that posture sorted you hit much better shots okay more swings through the app here uh camera moves around a bit we definitely see a bit of a over the top action as people call it on the downswing so the big shift over so we see the club i think on this one if i draw your hand path around there getting steeper so the shaft of the club's deeper than the hand path which is always going to make it almost impossible for you to square the face up so the face is going to be open to the path you're swinging on so not square it up to the target square it up to the path or even close it to the path you're swinging on um, we see a lift on the way back as well i'd like to see you try and get this left shoulder down a little bit more on the back swing it's coming down then here we see this sun pull up as you slightly over rotate then the big hoik over so we're going to need to drop this head down below the hand plane which we'll talk about but we also want you on your back swing to think about trying to keep that left shoulder down just feel like you're putting a little bit more what we call side bends your bent to the side here in on your backswing maybe take a little bit of the bend out just to try and help you load better on the downswing let's get on the range and show you what i mean so first thing watch some of my other videos on the head coming over the hand paint got lots of good drills one arm drills seem to work well with people at the minute so watch some of those videos would apply to you as well another thought for you to try and think about as well is i want you to try and make a backswing where you put a little bit more of a dip into your left shoulder on the back and feel like your shoulder just goes down you i would like you to keep or or make or, or incorporate a little bit more side bend into your backswing so if you think about your backswing you've got rotation you've got a bit of bend so bending forwards not much side bend so left shoulder going lower which is why we see you kind of round here so what happens as you take your bend out of your backswing so this starts coming up which everyone does you don't put much side bend in so it looks like you stand up you've got to replace bend with side bend to feel like you get your hands up in the air a bit more and stay over so for you you need rotation like you've got turn so i've put no bend in this i'm just stood up right 
and then I'm putting side bending, so I'm bending down to the side here. That's how you start seeing golfers getting up in these kind of positions at the top of their backswing. So for you, I want you to do that, all that bend, side bend, I know it sounds complicated, get your head around that, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I just want you to feel that you make a backswing where you try and keep that left shoulder moving under your chin a fraction more, just to stop this temptation to move that way. That's a little footnote. You still need to think about pulling the downswing, dropping the handle, dropping the head below your hand path. That will still work for you. Reference my other videos for that. I've done loads. Um, but just that little tweak in that backswing, trying to feel like your left shoulder just pushes down that fraction lower, definitely will help you load up in a way that might encourage the downswing to start on a slightly friendlier path. Hope that helps what's going on here don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel also thumbs up the video post comments love to hear what you guys got to say let's keep it social the more we talk the more we share the easier this game will get for uh, for everybody so if you want to find me on facebook here you can find me on facebook if you want to tweet me find me on twitter here as well just follow the links all in the description come and join the show get active get involved get playing some better golf thanks for watching